Democratic Senator Maria Cantwell of Washington State. Senator Cantwell, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Chuck. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I, I know you're among the Democrats, not a big fan of this tax plan. Let me ask you this. How much, how, uh, how much are you willing to show your opposition? Meaning, is it worth trying to shut down the government to stop this tax plan? What, what stops do you think you should put out to oppose this tax plan? Well, we're doing everything we can today to communicate about it and to convince our colleagues, particularly from states who are going to be greatly impacted, like Nevada and Texas and Florida and my state of Washington, that this is a bad idea. It is not tax simplification. It's simply raising taxes on the middle class, that we should slow down, go and improve this process, that it's immense change to the tax code with a lot of very rush, rush, haste makes waste. And there are things in there that I don't think people even understand, even the people who want to see the changes in the tax code understand. What, um, were you ever open to uh, being more involved in this? I mean, I, I'm sure yes. on one hand you'll say yes, but I guess where did that break down? Did, did Senator Schumer say you couldn't be? Um, no, I think the issue is that um, actually when uh, Max Baucus was still here and we had we started these discussions, which I thought were important for a, a very uh, big perspective and that in my view, we live in an innovation economy and that innovation is driving lots of change. It also means that there's disruption. Mm -hmm. So for me, the question is, Yes, how do companies compete? But how does the individual worker also stay competitive? Where do they get the skill set that they need to make sure that they have a job? What are we doing about making the affordability of education or an apprentice job? Mm -hmm. How do we factor that into the equation? And the housing problem. Housing has become so unaffordable and it has been less and less of our economy in the last. It's been fallen from 15% of GDP to 12% of GDP. So what are we going to do to fix the basic middle class problem? So I think what happened is the administration decided, okay, we're, we're going to come up with this plan. And even though we had a few uh, meetings with them where they came to meet with finance committee members, they kind of eschewed this notion mm -hmm. that we should go through a regular order process. Let me ask you about where I think Democrats have a lot more leverage potentially in these year-end votes, which is on the budget bill. Um, how do you plan on using that leverage? What do you think is the best thing to fight for here as Democrats? What are you going to, what are you willing well, to shut a, down the government there, for? Well, there is a plethora of issues to be dealt with before the end of the year. And I guess our biggest worry right now is that people are just talking about uh, doing this tax bill and then doing a CR till next February. And what's most important right now, because if you think about what's on our plate, first of all, you have all of these disasters in our state and in the Northwest and in California, right, fires, you have fires, right. you have drought, you have, you have the floods in, um, and storms in Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico. Then right. you also have this big debate that people want to have right now, which is lifting and busting the caps on sequestration. Right. So I'm scratching my head to my Republican colleagues. Why are you now wanting to have this debate about adding, you know, spending $5 trillion when we haven't even had this discussion about the budget caps on sequestration and on the supplemental that is going to be in the hundreds mm -hmm. of billions of dollars? So to me, these things all go together. Right. And I would be trying to leverage the discussion into what is good fiscal policy and what is good stimulus. And I don't think, to your last uh, uh, interview with my colleague, yeah. He and some of the Republicans keep touting this 3% growth issue. And I don't know that there's any economist that is saying that it's going to get to 3%. No one is saying that. People are even doubting whether they're going to get to 0.3% yeah. growth. So what I want is people to slow down and talk about the investment side of this. Is this going to the right place? Because right now they think if it goes to the corporate, it's going to go into the economy. And what I think it's going to go to is dividends. And will that be good for some people? Well, yes, but does it take care of that transitional yeah. economy issue that the middle class is suffering mm -hmm. from? Uh, a lot of uh, House leaders, including Nancy Pelosi, have called for John Conyers to resign. Uh, does that change your view on Al Franken, your colleague in the Senate? Is it time for him to go, or do you still think an ethics investigation first matters? 
Well, I know there's new information today, but I haven't reviewed it. I'm going to review it tonight. Believe me, I've been fighting between trying to keep our local deductions, which is what we're going to be offering an amendment on in just a few minutes. Also fighting to try to get ANWR out of this. Uh, there has been a lot of work that we've been doing today with the parliamentarian. Okay. So I haven't been able to even review the accusations, but I'm going to do that. And if you want to check with me tomorrow, sure. I'll give you an answer. Let me ask you this. What's your definition of zero tolerance? When, when I keep hearing this word, there's going to be zero tolerance for this. But what does that mean well, to you? I, 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 you'll have to ask people who have used the word zero tolerance. Chuck, I think what the larger issue is here is what can we do now? to really understand this issue from all mm -hmm. its complexities. And to me is what existed in our culture that allowed this to go on? I think today uh, or yesterday, the disturbing aspects of some of the news was that, yep. oh yes, people knew that this was what was going on. This is the environment that existed, that it was kind of looked at as a buddy-buddy, give somebody a pat on the back for being the big womanizer or uh, using their influence this way. And I think what we have to say is what what is it about our culture that was allowing that to exist and what can we do in the U.S. Senate? in yeah. the private sector, in, an, in every education sector, to make sure that that does not continue uh, okay. to be the norm for our society. That is a very right. important aspect. Senator Cantwell, I'm out of time. I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks thank for coming you. on, and we will check back in with you on all those topics. Yes, thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.